Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, doing the EC30 day uh, extended forecast for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well for today's second video. So yes, this is your Tuesday extended European outlook and I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video release today was our 6am UK weather forecast and if all of that wasn't enough, uh, we've got a 10 to 14 day with all of the regular features coming up later on this afternoon as well. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Thank you so much to eshamp.int for supplying my charts as well. Thank you so much, EC. Epic, epic, epic. Thank you so much, EC, for doing that. Right, going to start off with week one. Mean sea level pressure anomaly taking us through the week we're currently in. It's the 14th to the 21st of August, and high pressure is dominating across much of northern Europe this week. Got low pressure in the Atlantic, moving into southwest of Europe, and then bit of low towards Greece as well. High pressure ridging perhaps through these uh, eastern parts of Europe. 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. Very anti-cyclonic this week. Above average heights covering large portions of, uh, of Europe. Low pressures in the Atlantic. And a little bit of lower pressure through here as well, maybe. Right, so here's the all-important temperature anomaly for this week. It's a hot week across much of central and western Europe. We have a swathe of really quite hot um, temperatures from Spain, extending through France, into Germany, just into the low countries, into Poland, and then eastwards in towards uh, the uh, northeastern parts of uh, Europe, so into the Baltic Sea states, Belarus as well included in that and to even portions of Ukraine um, with a temperature of dominance of around 3 to 6 degrees below average. Going further north of that, not as warm but it is still above average across most of Scandinavia, so Norway, Sweden, uh, again up towards Finland and northwest of Russia we come away more than average shoot there. And then back to the UK and Ireland again we see a temperature of even around 1 to 3 degrees above average, so not as hot as it is over the continent but still significantly warmer than normal and the warmest week we've had probably since the start of July. Um, into the Med, so the central western part of Med looks hot, particularly through Spain, also through Corsica, Sardinia, Balearic Islands, Mallorca, Mallorca, Ibiza, looking quite hot through there. It is a little bit cooler when we go south and east of Italy, so then we do run in some slightly cooler temperatures around the Greek islands, and also southern parts of Portugal may be coming out a little bit uh, cooler there. But that said, it is a warm, hot week across most parts of Europe. And precipitation-wise, it looks pretty dry in many areas this week with some variation. We've got central France looking a little bit wetter. Central Germany also looks quite wet. Uh, central parts of the UK and heading into um, southern parts of Norway looks a little bit wetter there. I would imagine a lot of that is down to thunderstorms and whatnot being triggered by heat and humidity, but uh, there are the exceptions, also northern parts of uh, Norway and Sweden. There are the exceptions. We actually see drier than average conditions across most parts of Europe, Ireland and Scotland coming out drier than normal, much of the low countries and northern France coming out drier than normal, and to southern France into the Alpine areas, and then eastwards of that through towards the Balkans, for example, and north towards Scandinavia and around those Baltic Sea states and the eastern parts of Europe, again, looking pretty dry through there. Into the Med, we find that the central bowl of the Med is large on the dry side, as is Spain and Portugal, but it does look a little bit wet when we get towards the Greek islands and uh, go a little bit further southwards. Okay, that's week one done. Week two will be the 21st to 28th of August. Uh, high pressure is more into the North Atlantic and the western part of Europe this week. So high pressure on the move. Low pressure down across southern Europe and in the northeast as well. How's the 500 millibar height normally looking? That's how it looks. So again, above average heights covering much of northern and western Europe and out into the United States. A trough of low pressure into the northeast of Europe and the northwest of Russia. Brr. Russia. Um, temperature anomalies for week two look like that. Pretty hot again through Spain, Portugal, into southern parts of France and northern Italy around those Alpine regions. Switzerland, for example, I would imagine, is coming out pretty hot there. Uh, just into the far south of Germany. North of that, it is uh, not quite as hot, but it's still warm and average through large portions 
of Northern Europe, got UK and Ireland again, around 1 to 3 degrees above average, much of the low countries, Northern France, and the majority of Germany, Poland, and towards Ukraine, coming out around 1 to 3 degrees above normal to the north of this. It's still pretty warm across large portions of Scandinavia, but the extreme northeast does look a little bit cooler, and that's particularly affecting um, northwestern Russia and just into the north and the east of Finland as well. Around the Black Sea, it's a warm and average uh, through there. And then down into the Mediterranean, mostly above average from west to east. It does look a very warm scene. And uh, precipitation for week two looks like that. So extreme north of Scandinavia into the northwest of Russia, coming out wetter than average. Also northern regions of Finland. Uh, they've got this drier than average weather covering most parts of Europe, actually. So it's a slight weaker season this week, too, but you can end business, but all of this area is going to be largely driving than average in reality. Um, then we go south of that into the Med. Also a little bit wetter through, <coughs> excuse me, northern parts of Africa and into uh, Italy. But on either side, pretty dry through the eastern part of the portion of the Med and uh, largely dry into the western Mediterranean as well. Week 3 will be the 28th of August to the 4th of September. Bit of a change. Lower pressure starts to cover... Uh, well, it starts to cover most parts of Europe, actually. It looks, it looks rather a strange anomaly. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height. So quite a significant change with a trough of low into um, Scandinavia, anyway. And the high pressure just generally kind of disappearing. Um, the temperature normally is coming down, but it's still above average, particularly through central and western parts of Europe. So anywhere from like Poland, Germany, west, um, back to Ireland, the UK, France, Spain, Portugal, above average temperatures through there. Scandinavia, and particularly the northern portion of Scandinavia, looks like it could be somewhat cooler. And most parts of the Med are coming out with above average temperatures there as well. It looks more unsettled, so there's a quite a significant change going on here. Wetter than average, particularly through France, Spain, Portugal, and into the central part of the Med. So that possibly extending up towards the UK, Ireland, and also into Scandinavia as well. Could Eastern Europe be getting the uh, best of the driest weather there? The Med does look quite unsettled, I have to say, right away from Spain and Portugal in in, uh, in the west. I get highlight shot from Spain and Portugal in the west, all the way over to Greece in the east. These areas are looking really quite wet, which is a little bit unusual for early end of August, early September. You normally expect to get wetter a little bit later on. <coughs> Excuse me, week four is going to be the hold on for to be 11th of September, with again plenty of low pressure across southern and western Europe. Anyway, 500 millibar heights looks like that. Um, so let's put in a question mark. It is quite a weak signal by this point. Uh, temperature anomalies are average to slightly above average in large portions of Europe and precipitation. It's a very weak signal, but could be a little bit on the drier side up towards Norway, but otherwise wet patch through like uh, Denmark, Germany, low coast, and possibly to the UK and Ireland. Very weak signal though in most areas. Right, that's the 30 days okay done, but let's go for week five and six data before we go, because why shouldn't we? Why not? Let's have a look at week five, then. It's the 11th to the 18th of September. Looking unsettled again with low pressure Across the west of Europe, perhaps higher pressure over towards the Black Sea and uh, the Ukraine. The 500 millibar heights looks like that above average heights across eastern parts of Europe. Maybe lower pressure through here, but it is quite a weak signal as, as it's five weeks away. Generally above average temperatures in many places, average to slightly above, and still looks a bit on the wetter side uh, through some of Scandinavia, through Germany, through the low countries, and back to Ireland and uh, the United Kingdom as well. Drier though in the southern and the southeastern uh, portion of Europe, especially around the Black Sea and at south towards the Balkans, around the Asiatic, towards um, central parts of the Med too. Right, week six rounds it all up. It will be the 18th to 25th of September. Very, very weak seal, but still looks uh, like got a little bit of low pressure in the North Atlantic into the far west of Europe. So it could be a wet September for Northern and Western Europe. It would be a bit of a turn up to the books for that to happen. We haven't had one for quite some time. 
500 millibar heights, again, with some above average heights across northern and eastern parts of Europe. Not really clear if we've got much low pressure in the Atlantic and into northwestern Europe, though. Temperature anomaly about average to slightly above warmest area from the eastern side of Europe and precipitation anomalies. Um, yes, it's still looking like it could be rather on the wet side in the far north and west of Europe. Wow, wow, wow. So it could be a wet September on our hands here for Western and Northern Europe. We shall see. It's a long way off, but that's how it's looking today anyway. Um, but August, so yes, more changeable conditions to come. Starting off very warm, hot, really, across much of uh, Europe this week. And the heat does carry on in some places into next week as well. Gradually turns cooler towards month's end and then potentially into something uh, much more unsettled for Northern West Europe anyway uh, through in September. But that is all to be revealed and remains to be seen. Remember, just a snapshot of what the model is showing today. It could look completely different when we look at this again next week for next Tuesday's 30 day European outlook. And remember, we will be looking at this model once more on Saturday morning with a UK and Ireland focus. If you've enjoyed this extended European outlook, please you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. We'll be back shortly with your 10 to 14 day out, um, including all the break features. For this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.